The Muppet Show wrapped in 1981, which made room for another feature-length film. The Muppet movie was a pretty big hit, so it made sense that the great Muppet caper could do the same kind of business. But when it was released, it only made half the revenue of the first film, and it wasn't nearly as successful with the critics. Forty years later, it has remained a cult favorite amongst Muppet enthusiasts for its witty humor and the way that the story spoofs cinematic traditions. So you all know by now that I'm a huge Muppet fan, and there seems to be amongst the Muppet fanatics a struggle between which of the first three Muppet movies is truly the best. Well, I guess it's down to me. I'm the one making the videos, so I must decide. Is The Great Muppet Caper the best one yet? Is it the overlooked successor? Let's take a look at this Jim Henson directed feature. When I discussed the original Muppet movie, I gushed at the production value and how it pushed the technology forward, developing so many techniques and establishing itself as one of the great special effects films, one that I think has been often overlooked. It makes sense for The Great Muppet Caper to push things further, and it does, to a point. It also relies on what made the first movie work, with many cameos, parodies of cliches, and fourth wall breaks. I had previously been informed that the Muppet Caper is a much funnier picture, and for the most part, that's correct. It has a lot more banter, it has more outside-the-box jokes, and the plot lends itself to more hilarity. Whereas the first movie was a Muppet origin story, The Great Muppet Caper is a mystery and heist story taking place in a different country and starring even more Muppets than before. The story revolves around Kermit, Fozzie, and Gonzo sent on an investigative reporting mission in Great Britain, searching for an infamous jewel thief who plans to strike again. While there, they meet Miss Piggy, an up-and-coming European model who's secretly just a receptionist, and they stay at the Happiness Hotel, a completely run-down establishment that encloses the Muppet Ensemble cast. However, Piggy is framed for a diamond robbery, so it's up to the gang to prove her innocence by catching the thief. Will they succeed? Does it really matter? Like a lot of Muppet stories, it's not really the plot itself that keeps things moving, but the humor and the characters themselves. It's just a chance for the group you love to take on a different environment, which helps the creators to experiment with new gags. It's strange that this would be the only Muppet movie where the characters star as their legitimate selves, but taking on different backstories. It's like if the Muppets were on an episode of the show and taking their places for an extended skit. The other movies always had them playing a version of their established history, like in Muppets Take Manhattan, or the first movie, or as real-life Muppets as if they were celebrities, like the newer Disney films. Sure, they played fictional characters in Treasure Island and A Christmas Carol, but I've never seen where Kermit and Fozzie keep their names, but star as journalists who in this case, happen to be brothers. Or Miss Piggy, who happens to live in the UK and starts working for a fashion mogul. I kind of wish they went for this style more often, because we don't need to see the repeated history of the Muppets themselves. I like when they do takes on classic literature, and I especially like when they take on roles as if it's charades. Like the Electric Mayhem Band, you get to live at the Happiness Hotel, and Beauregard, you get to be a random taxi driver. It's more playful when their distinct personas can go outside their normal parameters and be in unique positions. What solidifies a Muppet feature is the music. I wouldn't say that these are on the same level as the first one, but there's still some standouts. The opening song has a lot of fun and gets you energized for the rest of the show. The set is classic and the movements are impressive. The biggest number is the first time it happens, which plays up the classic Hollywood musical tropes while being just as good as something from that era. It's large, it has epic dance performances, it's meant to be humorous, but it still works like something that would be nominated for awards. In fact, this was nominated for an Oscar. I can't sing along with these as well as some of the others in the series, but they still have that same kind of dedication you'd expect from the Muppet brand, and I love them more with repeated viewings. While the cameos may not be as groundbreaking this time around, there's still a few good ones to mention. 
Jack Warden as a classic, bossy newspaper editor, Joan Sanderson and John Cleese as a prissy British couple, and just as Big Bird was in the Muppet movie, Carol Spinney returns to perform Oscar the Grouch. This also has an appearance from the man himself, Jim Henson, as well as the other Muppet performers. I think the best of all is Peter Falk. I enjoy watching this guy act in general, but he's so straightforward here, basically playing a version of his Columbo character, coming off as smart and intuitive, only for Kermit to exclaim that everything he said was completely wrong. I'm not sure what's funnier, Peter Falk or Kermit getting all vocal about a random man's insinuation. It really shows that extra level of comedy that happens here. I can't really explain it, but you've seen this kind of scenario before, where the wise mentor appears and he gives advice to the main character, usually leading into the third act. It pokes fun at a trope I didn't even comprehend was a trope. With all the accolades I'm giving this, you'd probably think this is one of my favorite Muppet movies. Granted, I like the setup and everything it could be, but it unfortunately never stays in my memory like the others. I didn't grow up on this one. In fact, it was one of the last Muppet movies I saw. It's not the same kind of technical achievement that the first one was. It still has a lot of ingenuity, but nothing that stands out compared to what came before. The first movie had Kermit riding a bike, and this one had multiple Muppets on bikes. The first one had the largest group of Muppets being performed at once. This one has less Muppets being performed at once. I appreciate the camera movements and sets, but it's hard to follow up the big deal that was the first Muppet movie. Plus, since this is more of a comedy, it doesn't strike that emotion that's been found in the better Muppet films. So unless you really dig the jokes, this may feel like a dud. It reminds me of something you'd see from the Zucker Brothers. It mocks Hollywood cinema and genres, but unless they manage to create something timeless, it might not be as effective as when it originally premiered. It's a funny movie with a few good tracks and does everything that made the first movie great, yet, without doing enough differently, it becomes nothing more than a decent follow-up. Strangely, this same situation played out with the Disney flicks. The Muppets in 2011 was a great beginning point that had the best songs and emotional backbone, while Muppets Most Wanted went more for laughter. I don't dislike either, but if I need to choose a more compelling piece, I'm going with the first entry. This is just my thoughts though, because a lot of people have not only called The Great Muppet Caper a great Muppet movie, but also the best and funniest one of all. It's really a matter of what you want from the characters. I just prefer the 1979 picture. The only thing that everyone can probably agree on is that Muppets from Space is the worst of them all. But I guess that depends on if you count Muppets Wizard of Oz as one of the films. Or how about Kermit's Swamp Years? Remember that? Even Disney didn't want anything to do with that one. I don't want the impression to be that I hate this one because I don't. I think it counts as a disappointment, but there's a lot of good stuff in it that I didn't even mention. The villain is charming, the stunts are spectacular, and the pacing works. This one just blazes by, so it's a good one to rewatch on a relaxing night. You can pop it in and just enjoy the work of the Henson Company. And sure, it's not as groundbreaking as some of the other stuff that they've done, but it still satisfies the funny bone, the humorous. I, I just I just realized now that's why it's called the funny bone because of the humorous it's, it's been a pun all along special thanks to Lucas for this patreon request thanks for watching the video and special shout out to Anthony Anna Kirsten Lucas Ryan and Robert for the support on patreon by joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive videos and blogs, and for only $7, you can request your own movie review. I hope you stick around, cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.